Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So in the previous video, uh, we looked about the crime scene blood stain pattern analysis part one. And this is the part two of the same video series. And uh, up till now, what we have looked is we have looked about the introduction of blood stains, the basic biological properties of blood and how the formation of blood stain takes place. In this video, we'll be looking about the types of blood stain patterns. So let's begin. This is a flowchart showing the types of blood stain patterns. So the blood stain patterns are mainly divided into three types. Passive, the transfer blood stain patterns and the projective blood stain patterns. So let's uh, understand what is passive blood stain patterns. Passive blood stain patterns are usually formed due to the bleeding of the wounds. Normally, all the injuries that lead to a uh, flow of blood and in turn the formation of blood stain are the passive blood stains. They are considered to be the passive blood stain. So what happens here is blood is deposited on the surface of uh, by force of gravity. Due to gravitational force, the blood is deposited on the surface of any uh, object that is a passive blood stain pattern. What is the transfer blood stain pattern? So the second type is transfer. Here what happens is contact between the blood bearing surface and the other surface. The blood there are two surfaces the blood bearing surface that contains the blood while other surface on which this blood is transferred due to uh, both of them coming in contact. So these are termed as transfer blood stain patterns. The third type is the projected blood stain patterns. Basically, when a volume of blood is deposited on a surface under a force that is greater than the force of gravity. Now here another force is acting uh, which is greater or which is greater in magnitude than the force of gravity. Like any kind of force can be considered the, the uh, atrial pressure force in which the blood uh, which the blood experiences that is also a type of projected blood stain pattern the hope you have understand understood about the main blood stain patterns now these main blood stain patterns they also have subdivisions as you can look here let's see the subdivisions of passive blood stain patterns so passive blood stain patterns are further divided into five types these are the drip pattern the splash pattern flow pattern the blood pool and the bubble ring pattern. Uh, similarly, transfer patterns are further divided into uh, three types, which, which are the swipe pattern, the wipe pattern and the perimeter stain. And finally, the projected blood stain patterns, they are also divided into four types, which are the impact pattern, cast off pattern, forwards pattern and the backs pattern. Let's look about all these different types of blood stain patterns in a bit detail and understand what they mean and further which in which kind of cases they can be found. So passive blood stain patterns. Uh, as we have looked in the previous slide that passive blood stain fat patterns are formed in the passive state means uh, uh, normally they are present in normal condition when the blood is deposited on a surface right. So it is further divided into five types. Uh, the drip stain. First is the drip stain. Now let's see what it is. It is formed when a falling drop of blood is from an exposed wound or a blood bearing object lands on a surface. So you can see here in this picture, this is a drip pattern. What happens here is the blood is falling from an exposed wound on a blood and lands on a blood bearing object right so the second pattern is drip trail if the uh, blood source is moving drip trail is formed now suppose uh, a blood source uh, the person who is injured having injury uh, from which the blood is coming out he is moving uh, in certain direction then that blood will also drop in that particular direction so through that we can trace the uh, movement of that particular person right so this is termed as drip trail third is the drip pattern formed when a liquid drips into another liquid 
there is a surface on which already there is blood uh, blood stain was present and another blood uh, drops on the, another drop of blood drops on that particular uh, stain then a drip pattern will form uh, both uh, here one or both of the liquids are blood so this is not uh, important that both of the liquids should be blood and one liquid or both of the liquids may be blood secondary spatter stains are also formed in this case secondary spatter stains these are the termed as the secondary pattern stains which are formed from major primary pattern stain right so the fourth is splash pattern when a volume of blood spills onto a surface numerous peripheral elongated blood stains these are the splash pattern what happens here is a volume a greater volume of blood it spills onto a surface you can see here in this image this is a uh, this is an this is an example of splash pattern fifth is the flow pattern movement of a large volume of blood on a surface there is a large volume of blood present on the surface and due to its increasing volume it 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 has started flowing like the water flows in the surface so this is a kind of flow pattern the pool pool is an accumulation of blood liquid blood on a surface here is a clear image depicting the pool pattern Now, the next is bubble ring pattern here the air bubbles in are present in the blood you can see here this is a bubble ring pattern an air bubble is present on the uh, blood stain pattern or on the blood hence it is termed as a bubble ring pattern and the last is serum stain consist of liquid portion of blood after a clot is formed so uh, you have you uh, sometimes seen that there is a blood and it's pour some of its portion is clotted while the other portion it is uh, looking kind of um, plasma or the serum part which may be transparent so that particular stain is uh, called as a serum stain right so hope you have understood the uh, subdivisions of passive stain also let's move to the second portion that is the transfer stain so transfer stains as we have studied earlier are the stains that are pre uh, formed uh, when a blood is uh, transferred from one surface to another surface right so it is further divided into three types the swipe pattern the white pattern and the perimeter stain now what is swipe pattern it is a relative motion between two surfaces when the relative motion between two surfaces uh, causes the transfer of these stains that is termed as a swipe pattern right simple movement occurs simple motion relative motion between two surfaces here you can see this is a uh, picture depicting a hand hand will be uh, the blood bearing surface and the surface on which this uh, stain is formed that is the uh, uh, surface on which it is deposited so there is a relative motion between the two surfaces second is the white pattern an object moving through a pre existing blood stain now what happens is there is already blood that is spilled on the uh, uh, floor you can see here in the image blood is already present and an object is moving above or um, moving through that uh, pre existing wet blood stain that is termed as a white pattern white means we are wiping something moving something okay third is the perimeter stain perimeter stain it is a type of white pattern so we can consider it a white pattern where the blood stain is disturbed before it is dried but maintains the peripheral characteristics of the original stain now let's understand this from this diagram so what happened here is the blood was flowing in the downward direction right uh, if, uh, from the upward direction so before it is dried someone has disturbed the stain so the disturbed portion is clearly visible to you and the original portion or the original path of that uh, blood stain is also visible so this is very important you should remember it because it is asked sometimes in the exam then what kind of uh, blood stain pattern is a perimeter stain or such questions can be asked related to perimeter stain so you should remember it uh, it it holds a high importance 
during the investigation as it helps in the estimation of sequential events of acts so through it we can determine the sequence of events that would have occurred that led to this formation of this kind of blood stain further estimation of time frame between the time of bleeding and the subsequent act we can also estimate through it uh, so hope you have understood the transfer stains also let's move to the last part that is the projected patterns projected patterns are the patterns that are formed due to an external force other than the force of gravity okay so the, they are further divided into the impact pattern uh, when an object strikes liquid blood there was a liquid blood present and some object strikes on that liquid blood then the impact pattern will be formed second is the cast off pattern when blood drops are released from moving blood bearing object that will be a cast off pattern suppose uh, there uh, there is some material or there is a ball on which blood is present and it is moving uh, it is ro it is being rolled into particular direction then the kind of stains that will be formed through that movement is termed as a cast off pattern third is the forward spatter blood drops travel from an exit wound in the same direction as the projectile so you can understand from here that it is a gunshot injury or it occurs this spatter stain forms due to the gunshot injury right so what it says is it travels from an exit wound in the same direction as a projectile so let's understand this here through this diagram so the bullet or any kind of projectile was coming from this direction and it hits the subject what happens is that here the entry wound forms right so this is the entrance wound and this is the exit wound right so from that exit wound when the projectile will be uh, releasing from this wound certain uh, stains will be formed in the forward direction as that of the projectile so these are termed as forward spatter stains next is the back, back spatter pattern so back spatter patterns are usually formed from the entrance wound of the gunshot injury as you can see here uh, here the blood drops travel from an entry wound in the opposite direction so here you have to take a note that forward spatter patterns they are formed in the same direction as a projectile while the back spatter pattern they are formed in the opposite direction of the projectile Th this question can be asked in the exam for the the expiration pattern when blood is forced by air flow through the trachea and out of the nose and mouth uh, you can uh, see this kind of uh, pattern in cases of poisoning or when with the, the vomit the blood is expired through the mouth these kind of patterns are formed hence they are termed as expiration pattern and last is the atrial spurt pattern blood stains are driven by atrial pressure as i have told you earlier that atrial force acts on this uh, uh, which acts on the blood and uh, uh, due to which the atrial spurt patterns are formed these are an example of atrial spurt pattern these so hope you have understood all about different types of blood stain patterns this was all about this video in the next video we'll be looking at the uh, chemical enhancement procedures through which blood stain patterns can be uh, analyzed uh, about this video if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below further you can join our facebook and instagram handles you can also join our telegram channel for regular updates and please uh, do visit our website savvyforensic.com where you can find quality content so hope you have liked this video you can also share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel thank you very much for joining